Hey, B-Calculus AB students, we're taking a look at our third video, example three, dealing with topic 5.1. We're moving more deeper into this idea of the mean value theorem. So we're going to take a look at another mean value theorem. And I'll tell you what, we have to say we love the MVT. So let's take a look. All right, as you can see, this problem is fairly short, not a lot of text to it. It says to find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of f of x equal 2x plus sine of x plus 1 on the interval 0 to pi at the point which the solution to the mean value theorem, which is the solution, I should say, to the mean value theorem. And we're going to confirm our results here at the end using a graphing calculator. So what you're going to want to do to this is make sure that you understand what the mean value theorem is saying. And as I said in the previous video, it's just a derivative equals a slope. Anytime a student comes up to me and says, I'm having a hard time with the mean value theorem, I just say, well, do you know how to take a derivative? And of course, you know, by the time we get to this part of the year in November, they'll say, of course I do. Well, do you know what slope is? Well, that was algebra one. So you're just taking two things that you already know, set them equal to each other, and boom, you've got it made. Now, normally a mean value theorem problem requires that you have to write or state the conditions at which the mean value theorem applies. This particular problem, I'm not going to require that we do that. It's sort of implying that the mean value theorem is intact because we are going to expect this solution. So you want to keep uh, mind of that. It's very important that you state those conditions if you're asked to see if the mean value theorem does apply. So we're going to start off by taking the derivative of f of x. doesn't matter really if you take the derivative or find the slope. It's your choice. And if I take the derivative first here, I get 2 plus the cosine of x. Pretty simple there. And then I'm going to now go ahead and embark upon my slope. So that would just simply be f of pi minus f of 0, all divided by pi minus 0. So in this particular problem, I'm going to plug in pi for all of those x's. And I'm just going to be super careful, as you can see, and write it out. And I'm going to make sure that I put that parentheses in after my subtraction sign. I got a feeling that this is going to really simplify pretty nicely. We know that this denominator is just simply pi. So what do we get here? Well, I have 2 pi plus the sine of pi. Well, the sine of pi is just 0, so I'll just not choose to write anything with a 0 value. Minus, and then I have a 0 plus a 0 plus a, a 1, but that 1's going to be subtracted. And so it turns out that those 1's on the top just cancel. 2 pi divided by pi is just simply going to be 2. And so I have the two things that I want to set equal to each other already laid down. So we just say 2 plus the cosine of x is equal to 2. And then if I solve this, cosine of x is going to, of course, be 0. Now here's where we got an issue because the cosine of x equals 0 at a lot of different places. One of the ways that I like to illustrate this is more with a, a graph. I know some of you might be more of a unit circle type of approach to this. But if I were to graph cosine of x, I don't really even have to graph the entire first uh, cycle of it. And the reason is because my interval over which I am considering my values is just between 0 and pi anyway. So there's only one place where this derivative is equal to 0, and that would be at x equal pi over 2. Now, that is what the conclusion of the mean value theorem says. This is the x or the c value at which we have a slope of a tangent line that would look something maybe like this that's equivalent to the slope of the secant line. And I probably didn't draw that tangent line in very well because it's not going to be accurate. That's a, a small picture, and, and it's not meant to be perfect, you guys. But basically, the secant line and the tangent line from the point 0 to pi are going to be parallel. We are concerned more with finding out what is the equation of that tangent line. We're going to get a much better graphical view of this here in just a moment. So what you're going to have to do is figure out what is the slope of that line and what is the x and y coordinate of that line. Well, for the slope of that line, we already have the formula up here, f prime. We just need to figure out what the value of that f prime is when x is indeed pi over 2. 
So you're just going to take that pi over 2 and plug it into this f prime. And of course, we've already been here. We know that cosine of pi over 2 is just equal to 0. And so the slope is 2. Well, of course it's 2, because that's what we said it was going to be equal to. So we didn't have to do that, but it's a way just to reinforce. Now, I think we may have to uh, consider where this ordered pair is once again. And we know that the value of the x is going to be pi over 2. So let me get a pen here. And f of pi over 2 is definitely going to be something that we're uh, interested in on this function on this function. And so I don't think we've computed that yet. That's going to be something new, you guys. So we're going to go ahead and plug pi over 2 in for that x. And we're going to simplify this. It's not too hard to simplify. 2 times pi over 2 is just pi. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. Add another 1 and we get pi plus 2, which is about 5, a little bit more than 5. Now, this basically says that the ordered pair on this curve is pi over 2 comma pi plus 2. And so to write the equation of the tangent line to finish out our problem, we just use the point-slope formula. So I'll take y and subtract that y-coordinate. Make sure you put that y-coordinate in parentheses because it is a binomial. And then you set that equal to your slope multiplied by x minus the x-coordinate. And this should be the slope, or actually the equation, of our tangent line. Now let's take a look at this from a graphical calculator standpoint and see if it holds up. All right, now I've gone ahead and taken the liberty to, let me move the camera out of the way so you can see me. Hey guys, how you doing? I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of sketching this on the TI Inspire because I wanted to make sure that I didn't monopolize a lot of the viewing time here and, and have you watch me type this in because it's a very easy thing to manipulate on virtually any graphing calculator. But I've got the sketch of 2x plus sine of x plus 1. Verify that with your paper. That is the function that we were dealing with. And I actually computed the uh, particular function that uh, we found to be, um, uh, I guess I would say, uh, the tangent line at that particular point, pi over 2. And pi over 2 actually is the value at which uh, the, the tangent line would be parallel to the secant line. Now, I don't have the secant line sketched. Uh, it's something that you could probably imagine if I went from this point right here, 0, 1, all the way up here to where x was going to be pi, if I just kind of trace that along with my cursor, that looks certainly going to be parallel to that red line. I didn't want to sketch too many things because it would be kind of difficult to keep track of. But I did use the mean value theorem to come up with this pi over 2 value. And it's certainly agreeable that the equation that I got looks pretty reasonable. Notice I added the pi over 2 value over to the right to isolate the y. So everything works out perfectly. We found the equation of the tangent line guaranteed here by the mean value theorem. Thanks for joining.